Hi, it's Tom from TNB Tech. In today's video, we're going to set up a sensor node with no sensors, just to show how you get it on the network, get it connected to Home Assistant, and how it shows up in your Home Assistant install. So, let's get started. We've been talking about the sensor node, which is an easy way to get common sensors in the Home Assistant. I did overview a sensor node in a previous video. I'll put the link there, 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 to watch that if you want. In this video, I'm going to set up a sensor node. Assuming you have a sensor node here, take it out of the box, plug it in, your standard wall wart. Takes a few seconds for it to start up. Okay. Status LED is flashing like this, approximately 4 hertz. That means it can't get on the Wi-Fi. Probably because it doesn't have your credentials because it's brand new. Now make sure that this switch here is not thrown the wrong way because it disables the status lights. So if it's thrown that way, you can see there's not going to be any status lights and it looks like, status lights and it looks like it's dead. So make sure it's on and it'll show you that it needs to get on the network. So we're going to go over to the computer. We're going to get on the access point for the sensor node and put in our credentials. Okay, come over here and I select Wi-Fi, other networks. Ah, and you see there's a sensor node right there. And every sensor node puts out a Wi-Fi with the name sensor node and a big long number. And that big long number is the unique ID of the sensor node. And the last four digits of that unique ID are important because they're appended to all the names and all the information that goes into Home Assistant. So you can make sure you can tell the sensor node apart from perhaps other sensor nodes you might have on your network. So in this particular case, it's uh, 3237, so we're now attached to the Wi-Fi. So I just open up a tab, and I type in the Wi-Fi access point IP address, which in this case is 192.168.4.1. And then you see it comes up with a sensor node configuration server. And it's got a few things in it that are important to note. The last four digits of the unique ID that I told you about. The entire ID is there, so you can see them. So that's the entire U unique ID. Shows you the software version that's running, and shows you the different sensor settings. Now, you could hook this all up at once if you want to, but I'm going to do it in little bits because the internet likes little bits and little videos, so I'm going to try to make this one short and sweet and just show you how to get your sensor node on the network. Because even with no sensors, the sensor node appears in your Home Assistant install as a binary sensor device called sensor node with those four digits attached and any other descriptive information you want to put in. And it shows its attributes and you can kind of see that it's operating properly and it will actually make sure you know that it's online on the network even without sensors attached, which is kind of good because then you know it's working. So we're going to skip past the sensor settings here and we go to the general sense settings. So I need to enter my SSID and my password to get on my network. Okay, and I'm going to enter my password. In addition to that, there's a few other settings you might want to think about. The status light enables line here has three possible choices. The switch over here, this switch, controls whether the status lights are on or off. So if you're in a dark room or something, you don't want any lights you can turn it off and you can turn it back on to kind of see what's going on. But what light lights up is controlled by this setting. You can either have just the external LED, which is this one right here, or you can have the light on the Pico, which is that one right there, or you can have both. It's your choice. The switch always turns them off, but when they're on, you can choose which ones are on. And I'm going to just select both right now. The next line is the URL prefix of Home Assistant. And the, by default, the, it comes up with a default one there, homeassistant.local.8123. If you, if you set it up as something different, you can type in your own URL there and it'll go to whatever that one is. The next line is the name or the suffix for the name that is appended when sensor node attaches to Home Assistant. So by default, it always says sensor node dash four digits just like up here it'll say that but you can add something to the end to give it some descriptive name so i'll add something like uh u two i did this before of course u two demo 
right? And then it'll, it'll show up as that. So you kind of know, okay, that's the sensor node I just, I just uh, set up. And then when you hit submit and restart, it should all go and say, okay, it's gonna, now it's gonna restart and it will get on your network. Just after a few seconds, There, now, the, now it's flashing at a lower rate, approximately two hertz, and that tells you that everything's operating properly, it's on the Wi-Fi network, it's attached to Home Assistant, and everything's cool. So it's on the network, it's on Home Assistant, let's go see what Home Assistant says. Okay, back over to the computer. This is the overview dashboard that all Home Assistant installs create by default. And ever any device or sensor comes online, attaches to Home Assistant, it shows up here, which is great because then you can find it. And the fact that the sensor node shows up as a sensor node binary device makes it pretty easy to find. If I just come over to the binary sensors here, you can see a lot of stuff there, but if you scroll down, you'll see sensor node 3237 YouTube demo, and that's the one we just put on. And it, that shows that it's on sensor node reporting in as a binary device, basically saying it's on, right? But you can also click into it and get some more information. So if you click into it, You'll see what it, sh it shows up here. It's a minute ago, it, was, it came online. It says on and online intermittently there, and I'll explain that later, but that's just to let you know that the thing's working. I also want to point out uh, the attributes down here below. If you click into that, you can see some information about your sensor node install. It shows the firmware version like before. It shows the name that you typed in in the web page. shows the name right there. Uh, that name will show up on the dashboard, of course. There's the whole unique ID. It also shows the type, and that tells you what is in the sensor node. So is the temperature sensor and motion sensor. In this case, there are no sensors that were configured by default, because it defaults to none, because you don't want a sensor which is configured and then doesn't report. That's just terrible. So it defaults to no sensors until you enable them. Right, so right now it says sensor node, but no sensors found. So it's a sensor node device, but there's nothing else there. It also shows the IP address that the sensor node has, and it also shows the status update interval in seconds, which right now is set to, it defaults to 900 seconds. That means every 15 minutes, this device, this sensor node device is gonna report that it's online. And I have automation set up that will alert me if any sensor nodes go offline for more than two times the rate, to something like 35 minutes. That's what I have set up, but you can set up anything you want. Once I ship the thing, you'll be able to set that status update interval to anything you want or turn it off if you want. But right now you can see it's reporting on, inter, inter, interspersed with, online, with an online signal, which helps you to determine whether it's still alive or not. Because the last thing you want is a sensor or a sensor device out there that just stops working. I thought it was working. I didn't get any notifications, and but it's really off, unplugged or what have you. So this will let you know, and it works very well, whether or not your sensor nodes are still working. And if it stops working, you can get a notification saying, hey, the sensor node's offline. One more thing. When this product ships, you'll also have to add what is called a long-lived access token that you get from your Home Assistant install. You'll have to take that token, big series of characters and copy and paste it from your home assistant install into the sensor node configuration web page. It's not there now because mine's hard coded, but when the product ships, that's another step you'll have to do. So there it is. Sensor node device has been set up. It's on your Wi-Fi. It's connected to home assistant and it's reporting in. The next video is I will connect, I'll show you how to connect various sensors in the sensor node. Now you can do this all at once, but I'm showing it in, in little bits so to make it easy to digest. But in the next video, I'll show you the different sensors that you can set up and how you can change sensors once you have one set up, how you can change to another one. But for now, thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.